Good morning. Let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus together in faith. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family and in my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord of all. Today, my ears are opened to hear for the word says, today, if you will hear his voice. So by faith, I hear his voice now in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit opens my ears to hear as the learned. And I hear and receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And because I hear, I am made free. Because, you know, the word says, if you continue in my word, that you'll know the truth and the truth that you know will make you free. Well, yesterday I was sharing with you that today we would start on, uh, can I expect God to answer me and be there when I need him to? And we might get to that toward the end. But this morning, the Lord very, very clearly and specifically told, told me that you need to hear this, that you cannot move forward with a baggage of guilt and condemnation holding you down. And God's desire, and he sent Jesus for you to be free from that. Many of you, like I, were um, reared in a denominational church, and I'm so grateful for everything that they knew and everything that they taught me. But I did not know the freedom that the Lord had purchased for me. And I was more um, sin conscious of making sure I did everything right rather than just receiving what Jesus did. And I'm sure that most of you are there. So the Lord um, this morning said to minister this, these truths to you, <clears throat> Excuse me. In Isaiah 55, 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. Now, right now, we're going to focus on the word pardon. In Jeremiah 13, 8, this was what God prophesied. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And you're going to love this. And it shall be to me, to me, to him, a name of joy a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto you. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto you. Thus saith the Lord. But that was after he said, I will cleanse them from all their iniquity and pardon all their iniquities. Well, this is what came to my mind is, you know, in our country, in the United States of America, there is uh, a law that gives a president to the right to give a presidential pardon to someone. And what that is, is that simply that a person that has a sentence against them, he can step in and pardon that, and they go free. Well, that's what Jesus did, but to a much greater extent, is that he pardoned all of your iniquities. You are pardoned. And I'm going to read these, then I'm going to elaborate on that. This is the covenant, and this is Hebrews 8. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. 
and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And um, that was prophesied in Jeremiah. That is the freedom that Jesus purchased for you and for me on the cross. In Psalms 103, verse 10, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed, has he removed your transgressions from you. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. He has removed your transgressions and your iniquities from you. And like um, in Hebrews 8 that I just shared with you, your sins and your iniquities, he remembers no more. What a great, great promise that he has given to us. And in um, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. So, this is um, the way he brought it to me this morning. Is, you know, most, I would say the majority of people on this earth think of God as a judge. And I have to be honest, for a long time, it was a fear of God because I felt like he was judging everything that I did. Uh, and again, that whether or not it was said that way, but somehow I, I erroneously um, thought that, and it was just like it was in me that I had to do everything just right, that he was judging me for everything. And so um, one day, the Lord just gave me this revelation, and I'm going to share it with you that, you know, a judge can either say guilty or they can say not guilty. They can acquit, which means that they let them go free. And what the Lord says is, I have judged you not guilty forever. I have acquitted you from all sin from all of your past sin, all of your present sin, and all of your anything you do in the future, any mistake, any sin, any um, anything. And so this is for somebody special that the Lord wants you to know how much he loves you. You know, a person may have aborted a baby, and yes, it is sin. But, you know what the word also says, he that hates his brother is a murderer. So, in the mind of God, one sin is the same as another sin. And you have labored under the guilt and the shame of that. You know, Jesus took that sin on the cross for you. He loves you. And he has forgiven you. He has pardoned you. He has acquitted you. And he just wants you to know that he loves you. <clears throat> he cares for you. He, he pardoned you before you ever did that. I love that. Before we were ever born, he pardoned 
all of our iniquities. He actually became yours and my sin on the cross and freed us from all guilt of sin. He freed us from the sin and from the guilt of sin. And he remembers it no more. Now, what we do by faith is we walk in that pardon. We walk free from that sin so that we can receive everything from our Father's hand so that we can, as we move back into um, asking God and receive, asking from the hand of God and receiving His promises and benefits, we are free from this. We are free from condemnation of Anything that you have ever done, it doesn't matter what it is. Jesus became your sin on the cross. Not only your sin, but your condemnation, your guilt and shame of all of that sin. So that you could be free. And that is the reconciliation through Jesus. It says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself because he loved you so much that he didn't want anything to stand between you and him. And the only way he could do that was to take it all for you, to take all of your sin, all of your blame, all of your shame, all of your guilt, and to declare you free, to declare you not guilty. So I'm going to read this in Romans 8, 1 again. There is therefore now no condemnation. And I looked up that word condemnation in the Greek. It just means an adverse sentence or verdict. So there is therefore now no adverse sentence or verdict to them which are in Christ Jesus. If you're born again, you are in Christ Jesus. Saints, we need to stay in Christ Jesus. So, this is kind of a picture. In Christ Jesus, in Him, we have all the promises. We have freedom. We have uh, a, a great relationship with our Father. But if you ever get out of in Him and get over into, but I did this, or I need to do this, or I need to do that. I need to read my Bible more. I need to fast. I need to know those are works. And he says, by the works of the law are no man is no man justified or made righteous. So right then, when the enemy tries to move you out of in him and put you in works, then immediately you know the enemy is trying to steal from you. And you just say, nope, I am in him. There is no adverse sentence against me. There is no sentence of guilty against me. I am free. I have been acquitted, and I am not receiving that bondage in Jesus' name. And let that baggage go so that you can enjoy your Father the way He desires for you to enjoy Him and to receive out of his hand. You know, I was just thinking this morning, truthfully, according to the word of God, what our labor should be in the Lord, it should be taking all of his promises because that's the type and shadow. The children of Israel came out of Egypt, out, which was the hard bondage. They were slaves under hard bondage. We were slaves under the hard bondage of sin and uh, we were slaves to sin, to the, to the sin nature. And when we heard the truth, the word of truth about Jesus, that he had freed us, that he bore our sin, that he became our sacrifice, and we made him Lord, we were delivered out of the hand of Satan and into the kingdom of the son of his love. Well, now we are in the kingdom. We are in him. We have to renew our minds to stay in Him because all the promises of God in Him, in Him, as long as we stay in Him, 
and don't get outside of in him and get over here back into what we've got to do, but we stay in him, then we can receive all of the promises. So they came out and the whole thing was God told them, I am bringing you out and bringing you into a land flowing with milk and honey. That was the promise. I'm bringing you into a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a good land. It's an exceeding good land. And so their job was, or their labor was then, to go in and possess what God had freely given to them. They didn't even have to labor for it. All they had to do was receive it. Well, you and I have been given a great inheritance of promises. So our labor is to go in freely because just like they were delivered from Egypt and God, when, uh, when the Egyptians came after them, when Pharaoh and the Egyptians came after them, he said to them, this day you will see their face no more hereafter forever. So they were free. You are free from Satan's saints. You are totally free from him. And I say that you will see him no more hereafter forever. So now you are free. You are freed from sin. You are freed from Satan. You are freed from the curse. Now you go in and take the good land that God has given to you. Take it by faith. Receive the promises. So just like they went in, it was given to them, but they had to possess them. Well, Again, I'm going to share with you this word that we are to not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience, uh, that's fortitude or steadfastness, inherited the promises. So saints, enjoy taking your inheritance. Receive it. Let go of the guilt and the shame. Jesus took it for you. You don't have to bear it. He bore it for you. And receive his love today, his great love, wherewith he loved you. And then you'll be able to go in freely and just receive all of the gifts that your Father has for you. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for his word. Thank God his truth sets you free today in Jesus' name.